What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I got a new video for y'all today. It's uh, different than what I usually do. So y'all gonna have to let me know if you like this kind of stuff. Um, before I go any further though, let's make sure you click that subscribe button and ding that bell so you know when these videos come out. Uh, remember we're on our way to 700 subscribers so that we can march towards a thousand. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. If it's red, you're not subscribed. Once we hit 700, remember, the Razor Claw 2 is getting given away. So please subscribe. I think we're getting up close to 640 now. So we're on our way. I'm doing pretty good. Not too bad. Uh, man, I wish I had that other disc in here right now. I just remembered. But anyways, this video is going to be something I've never done before. I mean, me talking about some of the stuff going on this year in the off season, and uh, maybe me just telling you about some of the discs I'm feeling at the moment. So before I say anything else, uh, kind of some spoilers if you've not been paying attention in the disc golf world as of recent. Um, I don't know what's going on, and I almost feel like this is probably one of the biggest years we've had with just sponsor madness going on i know i can't remember the year uh i don't know if it was like 2013 or what i don't remember uh there was the mass prodigy exit well tons of players left they had a bunch of players they all left uh we've got that going on right now but it's not just prodigy innova seems to be losing their mind i don't know what they've done but if you've not paid attention ricky's out he left and as of this morning uh team dynamic discs has signed kona panis as their fpo uh big fpo player which actually was a surprise to me she posted that she was leaving in the other day i thought cat was going to be going to Innova, or i mean to um dd that was my guess because she left Prodigy, which was another big hit to Prodigy in my mind. She's been there since their start. Uh, so that was a big surprise to me. Um, I really thought DD was about to swipe up Cat. Tomorrow they announce Ricky. So that's today is the third to fourth. I don't know when this video is going to come out. But so the fourth, they're announcing their MPO player for dynamic disc that they're picking up. I'm assuming it's Ricky, but it could be somebody else. I've got some theories on some other people that might be going places, but um, I have been just confused at Innova's play right now. They uh, seemingly in like three or four days lost Ricky, Kona, Valerie Mandahano, I don't know how to say her name, and uh, Mason Ford, and maybe a couple other people. I think they picked up the carries, AJ Carey and his, uh, well, like, what's her, uh, is it Deanne Carey? Maybe? I think they picked them up, but big names have dropped, and I'm waiting. As far as I know right now, Gurthy has re-upped. They posted their star team, of course, Sexton and Colling still uh, team in of a, and I'm pretty sure Calvin Heimberg was still on the star team roster that they posted. So I was almost iffy wondering if Calvin was going to leave. Um, I could see it happening. My theory with him would be possibly Trilogy if he left, but as of now, I think he's staying, but you never know. But we've had Matt Bell leave DGA after extending his contract with DGA for three years. So people talk about contracts. At the moment, most of them don't hold a whole lot of weight. I think like the ones like Macbeth and Brody and them, they probably had legal um, help. And of course, Prodigy extending Kevin, he tried to leave people out uh, wondering if he was leaving Prodigy. They signed a big deal with uh, Kevin. That one was probably more legally drawn up. So I think the contracts now are getting more legal, but up until now, I think they've all been kind of 
what people call the handshake. I've heard a lot of the prodigy or not prodigy, uh, the pro players have dealt more on handshake uh, contracts than anything. So the contract didn't hold a whole lot of weight. So there's still players. I think I think we're still up for one pretty big one. I don't want to put it out there, uh, but I'm pretty sure that people shouldn't count their chickens before they hatch. That's all I'm going to say. I don't know, but that's all I'm going to say. Um, honestly, I don't know why any of us letting people go so easily, though. That one's just got me all um, messed up. But it's been an exciting uh, off season so far. Uh, Matt, uh, Matt Orham, Matty O, he left Prodigy and is now at Westside. Nico left West Side. They parted ways. I don't know if that was mutual or if it was DD parting from them, but it's been pretty exciting. Um, Y'all let me know if you have any theories behind why Innova's kind of letting their uh, players go. It's like they just don't want to, they just don't care enough to push money towards them or something. I don't know. Uh, we've had Eric Oakley. He left DD. Um, there for a while, DD, I thought, was kind of in a bad spot because they had lost a lot of big players and hadn't gained a whole lot. They they still had like Zach Melton and Chris Clemens, two of the top lefties. Um, Nathan Queen's another lefty out there that's at the top, too. But uh, I'm sure there's somebody else I'm forgetting. But... There for a while, they had dropped some players, but I think they have recovered and are starting to get back in a game of picking up some high-level players. So, Kat, I don't know. I thought she was going DD. Who knows? There's a chance that maybe Innova or Infinite. Infinite's becoming a big thing. Let's talk about that. Um, I don't think that... It's a bad thing to be seeing some of these pros doing the open bag with Infinite. Makes sense. Drew Gibson does it well. I think Oakley has a good... Uh, I don't know. He, he. I feel like he's good for an open bag with Infinite. The people that have brands, it makes sense to me. They're, they can sell themselves. And uh, Oakley with uh, the whale sack, whale pants stuff... He's done well, so I think he can do good. Matt Bell was a real surprise, honestly. But he's went with Thought Space, and low-key, the Thought Space Praxis is really good, although I don't know if he's going to be putting it or not. I can't remember if he signed with uh, EV7 or not, but the Praxis is a great throwing putter, so uh, maybe if he'd signed with EV7, it might make sense since they're a putter only. Since he's like one of the best putters, if not the best putter in the on tour right now. So, I don't know. But I think it's a good thing to see. I think at some point, I've had thoughts on this, that uh, companies offering tiered sponsorships. And not tiered as in like how they are now to being like low level tier, but everybody throws the same discs. I think that... At some point, it would be cool, almost how golf does it, but not exactly. Um, to be like if you're a low-level pro wanting to go out and start touring, that there's an option to be like, can I just throw your putter lineup or your fairway or your mids and that be a contractual thing to where you throw that company's mids or pro or whatever maybe not even that that's the only mid but you have to bag their mids maybe and i think that could be a positive because you could still be comfortable with your bag and then be sponsored low level but have incentives to going full bag like if you go full bag sponsor with dd you get access to all these different perks, winning perks and stuff like that. But if you just go partial bag sponsorship, then um, you still get a 
small amount of perks, but you're not going to get all the thing, uh, all the same um, incentives as it would be if you went full bag. I think that would give a lot of people a lot of working room whenever they're just trying to figure out what they like, but help low level pros um, be able to be comfortable and also get into the tour scene. I don't know. That's me. I think that would be something that's good because I you hear a lot of people talk about having a hole in their bag because of a company not having uh, a certain disc if you offered partial sponsorships then um, that might not be a problem and then your player would be comfortable I don't know that's my thoughts on it I think it's a good thing I don't know if like just going like EV7 is to where the only thing you produce is putters is necessarily the the future but the way they sponsor people could be because right now if you're sponsored by uh ev7 i mean you're only using their putters that's all they got so they can't they're not a full bag sponsorship so i don't know that's my thoughts on that i don't know this i, I feel like this season uh or end of season and beginning of uh, 2022 is like potentially the biggest uh biggest just storm sponsorship storm right now and i think a lot of players are getting to the point where they know their worth or know what potential they've seen what some people can draw um and are feeling like they are worth the same so it's it's getting interesting you guys let me know what you think about this stuff because i've been thinking about it and it's it's just it's been really interesting to watch. But I think that's all I'm going to talk about with the sponsorship switch-ups. Like I said, I think we still have at least one more pretty big one that could be a hit to a company. Also, where is Ricky going? Is, I think he's going DD. If he doesn't go DD, I'll know by the time this video is out. But um, I don't know. The only other logical thing to me would be um, infinite. Doesn't it's not necessarily logical. He's more like a company player. I feel like like one bag, but um, I don't know. What if Discraft's about to try to become like the monster and just take everybody? Take Cat, Ricky, have Paul Page. That would be an insane team. Hmm. We shall see. But let's go on to these uh, discs I got here. These are since, uh, of course, I made my announcement that I'm no longer going to be on Prodigy Street Team. Um, I'm going to show you guys just some discs, just a handful of discs that uh, I'm liking right now. And some are new and some are not new to me not new um, so i'm gonna start off with this this is one that i used to throw a lot and i still like it uh the maverick now these are different this is actual first run mavericks so I, these are not uh, i don't think they're the same stability as like stock run ones these are really easy to throw they're uh they might be a little more understable than your stock run mavericks but i got like three or four of them and I have had them for a long time. These are money. I can throw these like 50, 60% in that range on hyzer and get them just to flip up, ride straight, get a little drift to the right. Such an easy disc to throw and good for woods. So that's a stick out one to me. Um, has been for a while. It just wasn't in my bag when I was in the street team. But that one... Another one that's not new is the Escape. I've preached the Escape to people for a long time. Although um, Max uh, over at Throw More did get me to try Sapphire. I need to throw it some more, but my first throw with it was actually crazy good. I don't know how far I went, but I went really, really far and flew really nice. So I did like it. And what he told me, it was like a longer escape. It's not quite as stable. So I do like that. 
So, Loki, Sapphire, I need to m mess with some more, but for now, I still do like the Escape, and this one is sweet. It's a sparkle fluid out of production plastic, but it is sweet. And uh, these two are new to me. I hadn't ever really thrown them until uh, this year. 2021. It's 2022 now. These ones haven't been thrown. It's the ones I've got sitting around because I'm inside and it snowed. But the Envy, um, I've only I've only have baseline right now, but I've been throwing them. I've been liking those. And the Nomad. I've been throwing the Nomad, uh, not this one, another one I got in my, um, what's it called, that mystery box, the Gyropalooza. And that thing is really nice. So... Uh, I'm liking those two. They may make my bag officially. I will be doing it in the bag here at some point. But uh, I'm going to potentially try to putt Nomads. I don't know. I've not switched putters yet. I've still been on PA3s. I've only ever putted PA3s. And uh, for a while I putted Marshalls right before the street team. But they pretty much had the same rim profile. Uh, just the marshals maybe had a little bit more glide so it was like putting the same disc so uh, if I ever switch like to the nomads or something like that then that'll be one of the bigger switches I've ever done because I've never putted anything other than those really so uh, those discs are standing out to me I do have to say though one that has uh, I tried the other day was uh, a nuke SS and I don't know how, but I like Heiser flipped the thing and turned it. Is I've got I'm just saying this just because I've never done it before. Heiser flipped it and it rode for so long to the right, and I thought it was gonna roll, but it never did get to the roll and panned, and it hit like 450 so on flat ground. So that was a milestone for me. Never hit that distance before, so. That was cool. I'm, I'm going to keep messing around with that disc, but I mean, out of box, it's that flippy, so I don't know. But you guys let me know if um, you like these kind of videos, me sitting down talking. Uh, let me know if you want me to like get somebody else to come in here with me and we just talk about stuff going on. I mean, I know that's a popular deal with uh, other channels right now. I've never done it. Maybe we'll make a show. I don't know. I, maybe I get Father Richard or something to join me sometime. And uh, we just talk. Who knows y'all let me know if you like that idea but um, maybe I can get some guests one more thing I've got this disc right here I got this for my daughter for Christmas it is uh, ABC discs they all have dinosaur stamps and this one turns purple in the UVs um, let me know if you want me to try to do a challenge with this I've never thrown it but it's 120 grams. It's made for kids. Same size as a, another disc. There's a razor claw with it. But it's 120 grams. So I'd be interested to see how it flies. It's probably like a Frisbee, but uh, it's cool. It glows in the dark and it turns purple. Let me see if I can make it turn purple. Oh, yep, there you go. It's purple. Pretty cool for your kids. Uh, let me know if you want to see a challenge with that. I needed to add that in. But that's all I got. I just made this video because it's snowing. And I don't want to throw outside. So that's all I got. Till next time, guys. Peace.